This is Ken Leone, Vice President of Marketing here at Stock Rover. In this video, I'll show the breadth of Stock Rover's charting facility. I'll showcase a wide variety of chart settings, as well as how to manipulate charts when multiple charts are selected. I'll also show how to chart the performance of portfolios, watch lists, and screeners, and lastly, how to create individual charts using tiles. Please note, that some of the features shown in the video require a Stock Rover Premium Plus subscription. First, we'll want to select what we would like to chart under My Collections. I'll select Watch Lists, and I've selected a specific watch list called Stocks of Interest. Stock Rover offers two ways to get to the charting facility. Selecting Chart from the navigation pane will show only the chart. Selecting All Mode shows the chart along with the table in the Insight panel, so I can see comparative information for the selected ticker, in this case, Apple, as well as the chart, and detailed insights all at once. Once we have a chart selected, we can also pop it out. This is especially useful if you have multiple monitors. We can also close the pop out. We can maximize the chart, and we can restore all panels. I'm charting Apple. Let's chart year to date. Here I'm charting the price in dollars, but I can also chart percentage change in price. Let's switch to a candlestick. I've selected a weekly candlestick. Here we can see the low, the high, the open, and the close. For a slightly different view, we'll switch to the OHLC candlestick. Here again, we can see the low, the high, the open, and the close. Let's chart Broadcom's price for five years. I'll switch to price dollars. I'll go back five years, and I'll select Broadcom. We can switch to the price logarithmic scale, which is a linear scale for percent change. This option is highly useful if the price of the stock you're charting has moved by a large dollar amount over the period you're charting. Let's chart price percent. Here we see the return over the last five years. Let's adjust the price to include dividends. Notice how our returns have changed to account for the dividend adjusted return. Events allow us to see earnings announcements, splits, dividends, the max drawdown, any portfolio activity, and any alerts we've configured in Stock Rover. Let's overlay events that correspond to earnings per share announcements, dividends, and the max drawdown. When we drag over a circle, the tooltip shows us the dividends. When I drag over a square, we see details about the earnings announcement. When I drag over the down triangle, we see the max drawdown over the last five years. So we see for Apple that the max drawdown was 31.43% on March 23 of 2020. We can view a stock's performance relative to other tickers and benchmarks. We can benchmark against indices, treasuries, commodities, other portfolios, as well as sector and industry. Let's benchmark Apple against the S&P 500. Let's make the S&P 500 the baseline. 
here we can see over the last five years that Apple has outperformed the S&P 500 by nearly 240%. Let's remove the baseline. Let's compare Apple to Microsoft. We can see that Apple has outperformed Microsoft. Let's make Microsoft the baseline. We can see that Apple outperformed Microsoft by 87.2%. You can chart fundamental data for some 100 plus chartable metrics in Stock Rover. Here's a sample of the many fundamentals that are available to you for charting. Let's start by charting a single metric. We'll select price to earnings. Let's add a second metric. We'll select price to sales. Notice the fundamentals march in lockstep with the main chart. I can save these two metrics as a metric package so that they are charted together. I'll pick a pre-configured metric package called Earnings. Notice the tooltip tells me the fundamentals included in this metric package. Below we see our four fundamentals charted. Charting technicals in Stock Rover means you can choose from an extensive list of technical indicators. Technicals can affect the main chart or be standalone. Let's pick simple moving average. We'll chart the 50 day moving average and the 150 day moving average as separate lines. Let's switch it up and chart Bollinger Bands. The default is to show where the price lives relative to the price movement of the last 20 days using two standard deviations as the bandwidth. This of course is fully configurable in Stock Rover. Let's check out the MACD. The Moving Average Convergence Divergence MACD, shows the difference between a fast and slow exponential moving average EMA, of closing prices. The default MACD is calculated as a difference between a 12-day and a 26-day EMA of the price. A 9-day EMA of the MACD called the signal line is then plotted on top of the MACD functioning as a trigger for buy and sell signals. Let's check out volume. Let's compare the return of Apple and Amazon over the last five years. Now let's generate a ratio chart. A ratio chart shows how two different sets of time series data are trending against each other. We've already selected Apple as one ticker and Amazon as the other. The metric that is selected is price, but we can select from a wide variety of metrics. Let's include simple moving average too. In this chart, it's easy to see that Apple outperformed Amazon from July 2020 to March of 23, and then the momentum shifted to Amazon. The switch is not nearly as apparent in the price chart above. Valuation allows us to chart key valuation metrics. 
I'll pick price versus fundamental. Here, we see how the fundamental value varies over time relative to the price. In this instance, we're showing earnings per share, which is shown in the shaded area. Clicking on the hamburger provides us with additional options. We can either change the fundamental or choose to include or exclude the simple moving average. Let's go to the football field. Here we see key valuation metrics and their relation to their minimum and maximum value over the last five years. The blue line represents Apple's current value for each of the nine metrics. Each horizontal bar represents the min and max value split into quintiles. I'll bring the chart back to one year. Notice how the min and max values have changed. I'll bring it back to five years. Let's bring up the scatter plot. Let's go to the hamburger. In the scatter plot, a point is rendered based on its x and y axis metric value. For the x axis, I want to pick returns. and I want the 10-year return. For the y-axis, I want grades and scores, and I want the Altman Z score. Altman Z measures the credit strength of a company. Here, you can readily see the correlation between returns and credit strength. For Comcast and AMD. Managing multiple charts is quick and intuitive. I can expand, I can collapse, I can configure, I can move, I can delete. I can also save charts as an image. We can chart multiple tickers. I've selected portfolios under My Collections. I've selected the Warren Buffett Top 25 portfolio, and I've selected to chart Apple's performance over two years. We're currently in All mode. If I'd like to add more tickers to the chart, I simply right-click. I'll right-click on Amazon, and I'll select Compare in Chart. Below, we can see that we're comparing the performance of Apple and Amazon over two years. Let's reset. I can also add multiple tickers to the chart using multi-select. Stock Row uses the standard control click for Windows or command click for Mac technique to multi-select. I'll select Apple, Amazon, American Express, and Citigroup. I'll right click and I'll select compare in chart. Below we see the four tickers selected via control click. Let's reset. Let's maximize. I'm going to right click on the model portfolio Warren Buffett top 25 and I'm going to chart it. Stock Rover charts portfolio return values based on the weighting of each ticker in the portfolio. The weighting is based on the value of the holding of that ticker relative to the value of the overall portfolio. In addition, the portfolio charting accounts for trades as it looks at the holdings of the portfolio on each date in the charting period to calculate return. When calculating return, portfolio charting uses a time-weighted return, meaning the percent change on every day is equally weighted, regardless of the relative dollar amount in the portfolio. When charting screeners or watch lists, the returns are charted with an equal dollar weighting for each holding. Additionally, via internal rebalancing, the equal weighting is maintained each day of the period that's charted. Let's right-click on my brokerage account. 
and select Compare and Chart. Here we're charting the performance of the model portfolio, Warren Buffett Top 25, versus the brokerage account, Fidelity Joint. Let's make the Warren Buffett portfolio the baseline. Here we can see that the brokerage account outperformed the model portfolio by 33.2% over the last two years. We can display individual charts for each ticker via tile views. Under my collections, I selected watch lists. I'm using the table layout. I've selected stocks of interest. I'd like to first select a tile view. I'll go to views, ratings. Note there are some eight out of the box tile views and they'll always have tiles in the name. And we'll select the scores tile. Tile views show both tabular and chart data simultaneously. We can choose to show just the tabular data, just the chart data, or both. You can also alter the date range. We'll select year to date. You can modify an existing tile view or create a new one from scratch. I'll show you how to modify one. Under settings, we can control what tabular data to display. We can control the chart type. We can control what benchmarks to display. We'll select S&P 500. We can control the technicals. Let's display the volume. You can also add events and change chart settings. Let's save. Here we see both tabular and chart data simultaneously, and that we've added the S&P 500 benchmark as well as the volume. Let's choose to display the chart only. We can change the size of the chart from compact to medium to wide. We'll go back to compact. We can also choose to draw all the charts at the same scale. Tile views can be especially useful when you want to display individual charts for each ticker. I hope you found this video useful. I encourage you to explore Stock Rover and see all that it has to offer, as well as check out our educational videos on our website. Thank you for watching.